Everybody ready? Good, then let's get going. Hey everyone, a really warm welcome back. This is part two of two in this little mini series about creating a bespoke uh, fitted towing jacket out of an off the peg towing cover. In the last episode, I fitted the cover to the caravan, got it all adjusted so it was all in the right place, and then did the slightly scary thing of slicing a perfectly good cover in half so that I can install a zip, which makes it much, much easier for one person on their own to install it by themselves. Still, it's not super easy and it's not helped by having an A-frame bike rack in the way, uh, but at least it's doable by one person. But the reason it's not easily doable is that there's still a lot of excess fabric at the sides, uh, which make it difficult to get it in exactly the right place every time. As you can see from what I was wearing back then, I've been using the cover for a few months and we're getting ready for another season. So in today's video, I'm gonna show you the uh, refinements I made to make it even easier to use and to make it fit even better. So it's super practical and works really well for us. You'll have seen in the previous video and, and this bit here that the sides still have this huge bulk of excess fabric gathered at the top particularly, but not so much at the bottom as our gas locker is rather bulbous. So I'm going to try and cut a lot of this excess fabric out of the top part and replace it with some just ever so slightly stretchy um, but still water resistant soft shell fabric. So that's the stuff that has the fleece on the outside and it's uh, rain resistant, not totally waterproof, rain resistant on the outside so still breathable. And that should make the whole cover a lot tighter and slicker and tidier but it should also be much less bulky so easier to handle, easier to get aligned and easier to fold up into the bag. But before I do that, I've got to make sure that this thing is absolutely aligned perfectly because it's slightly off center at the moment. And later on, I want to insert some, some top windows so that actually my proper road lights that are at the top of the caravan can shine through rather than having to rely on these battery powered ones that are part of the cover near the lower part. I also need to get rid of that excess bit of long dangly zip that I've left on at the top uh, as I was testing the cover out and also add an extra plastic snap buckle into the center. You can see here that I installed some pretty chunky 50 millimeter black webbing and snap buckles in phase one and one at the top, one at the bottom. And they make it really easy to hold the sides together while you're finding the ends of the zip and getting that started. So making sure that nothing wobbles loose on the road as well but I want to have one in the middle because we've done a few overnight stops where I've just unzipped the cover from the top just to let a little bit of light into the front window. And if I had another snap in the center, then actually that would take the strain off the admittedly very chunky zip, but it would help to take the strain off the zip itself. So that's making sure everything is staying closed and exactly where I've set it. So having got everything correctly lined up, the first job is to mark up so that when I get to the sewing table in a minute everything is clear where the lines need to go so that I'm getting them in exactly the right place because I don't want to take too much fabric off at this stage otherwise uh, I'll have completely ruined the cover. I'm using a chalk pen so the marks are very clear when they first go on and the chalk is flowing and then that will gradually uh, wash off and wear off over time. <laughs>
But before I get to any sewing on the main cover itself, I do have a little fixing job to do. Uh, this is what happens if the strap that secures the cover under the A-frame comes loose. You end up dragging it along the tarmac for miles and miles and nearly all of the plastic itself wears away, leaving just this little stubby bit left behind. Thankfully, the cover didn't budge a centimetre, so uh, this strap that goes under the A-frame is clearly belt and braces. But still, you know, it's important to have it there in the case of, I don't know, a freak wind or something like that. Luckily, I've got this compatible spare buckle. Otherwise, uh, then it would be a, a bigger job because I'd have to um, change the receiver socket on the cover as well as the snap buckle itself. But because I don't have to do that, it's just a simple matter of taking the uh, bit that's left over and replacing it with a fresh new one because all buckles uh, do not have exactly the same profiles so although they might be the same size they might not snap in quite as firmly if they're a slightly different shape than other ones and I don't want this thing coming undone again It's a bit tricky getting all the spare webbing to be tidied up. I don't, don't want to cut too much off, so I want a little bit of spare here just in case. Uh, because sometimes you get burrs on the end when you heat seal these freshly cut ends, so that's what's causing the issue. But there we go, job done, and now on to the proper hard work. So before I get to adjusting the sides, I'm going to cut the excess fabric off of the lower edge because that's really difficult to tuck up neatly actually and it flaps around a bit uh, without doing anything useful. In fact, I think it probably picks up mo more road dirt than it stops. Uh, so that bit's got to go. And this fabric is really easy to work with. Uh, thankfully, all I have to do is cut it off and then uh, twist it over and hem it because it's fleecy backed and it doesn't fray at all which makes it really nice and easy to deal with and it's not too thick so it's easy to sew on the domestic machine. The only extra thing to do is to move the side buckle onto the lower edge to make sure that I can put extra straps on the side there if I want to secure the side to the front although I don't think they're really needed actually because the cover isn't shifting anywhere but best to have them there just in case. All right, and now I'm able to get this thing flat on the table. I can use the rough markings that I did when it was up on the side of the caravan uh, to get them all tidied up and then to work out uh, how I'm gonna get this slightly stretchy panel into place. So having cut the sides open, it's the simple step of turning over each edge to hem it. And then this will also give me a stronger edge to stitch the uh, soft shell onto in a minute. And then cutting mirror image pieces of the soft shell that's the fleece on the back and the water resistant stuff on the front to ensure that everything's symmetrical. So cutting them together to make sure they're exactly the same. The marks I made earlier on onto the actual cover itself were slightly different in places on each side and they shouldn't have been. So that means that the cover wasn't on perfectly symmetrically. So you know, now it's here on the table, I can get that all sorted out and make sure we're getting the uh, same on each side. Because I'm leaving the side webbing straps in place, I can use those to help get the soft shell into place and get it all lined up perfectly so it's the same on each side. And I've chosen a grey soft shell rather than black for two reasons. So because this fabric will be outside and obviously weathering, I hope the grey will show the effects of UV less than a black piece would. And also I think a slightly different colour on these edges, you know, adds a bit of design flair so it makes it look a little bit different. Having re-sewn one of the sides, then the next little job is to tidy up the zip a bit. You'll remember from that last video that this heavy duty open ended zip was only available in a very, very long version. So earlier I had loads of spare zip that I'd left in place just while I was testing the cover itself. And although I'm tidying it here, I've still left quite a bit spare as at the time I did this, I was convinced that folding the excess over and tucking it under that weatherproof flap that I'd sewn on to the front um, in the last video was actually useful because it took the strain off of the zip and then stopped it coming, up, coming open in use. Having used it like this for a little while now, um, I think actually that's overkill. So once this video is, is finished, I will need to get round to shortening it again to make sure it's exactly the same length as the cover. And that's easy to do at the top. I can't do it at the bottom uh, because it's an open-ended zip. So it has the metal starter points at one end. So it can only be shortened from one end. 
Okay, so now to re-sew the other side's uh, base, having cut a bit off, and then the edge, and then to, and then to insert that, that third spring clip at the centre point. The fronts of modern caravans are actually fairly complex geometrically because we've got GRP nowadays. So I'm going for the fairly simple approach of just putting a, a wedge shaped piece of uh, the slightly stretchy fabric, as I said, the, the soft shell fabric. So I'm putting a wedge shaped piece into the side and allowing that slight stretch in the fabric to be able to mould around the corner and then leaving the side webbing straps in place just to give me absolute control over the, the final fitting to make sure it does indeed fit like a glove. So it won't be as sleek or as slim line as a, a properly manufactured professional one, of course. But, you know, nobody makes one of those for this caravan. Although since this footage was filmed, actually, I've noticed that ProTech have started selling them for the Nova S range. And other ranges, like the Nova Lite, um, are very similar indeed on the front end, actually. And the Nova Lite is exactly the same as the, the Ariba Feeling. The Nova Lite's the full height version and the Ariba Feeling is the pop top version. So I reckon if you are prepared to drive your Ariba Nova Lite or your Feeling or anything else that's not listed on the, the database over to Protec, then they may well um, take some time to pattern it and sort out a bespoke cover for you. And in the interest of balance, I should of course point out that Specialized Covers have a Nova 570 listed on their model selector, so maybe they would do that too. Okay, so here we go, test fit of the super evolved glove-like version from the off-the-peg version. And much to my relief, it fits really well. I'm super happy with the result because having got rid of that uh, excess of bulk of fabric that was gathered up at the sides, uh, that was really stiff fabric actually, and it was super difficult to get it to sit correctly in the right place. And so I was forever having to fiddle with the side straps to get it on, which just meant it was a bit of a time consuming process putting the, the front cover on actually. But now it fits really easily and really nicely. You know, there's no rearranging it, all that excess flappage at all, or trying to squash it down or rearrange it to get it flat uh, so that the zip will do up, which is great. I only installed the slightly stretchy soft shell stuff in the top part of the cover because the bottom half all around the gas locker is actually already multi-part and it's shaped um, and it's all held together by velcro so you can get it to fit perfectly around your gas locker so that already actually sits really nice and flat it was just the top section that was flapping around too much and had that excess of, of fabric gathered up there I'll pop a couple of photos in so you can see a close-up of the cover in use and then what I've done to the edges Okay, then having tested it all out, I need to cut the top part to insert the little windows so that my actual road lights can show through. There's no adjusting these though if things go wrong, um, hence all the time trying to get everything else correctly lined up and perfected, and then leaving this as the very last uh, modification that I make. Now, this is a little complex actually because the, the lights themselves actually sit directly under the outside edge of the front cover, so the main front part rather than, than the side parts. And that has a bit of uh, reflective banding at the edge. And not only that, but the seam where the side part meets the front part is actually slightly to the left, the inside edge of the lights, uh, which means I'm going to have to cut through multiple layers and stitch the, the side part down to the front part using this window film. So that is that will then make it impossible to move things around once these windows are fitted. So it's absolutely crucial to get this right. So here's what I'm doing.
So these are the little puck lights that I showed you in the last episode. I don't often tow in the dark, so I haven't needed these very often. And that means I haven't needed to change the batteries. Interestingly, now that the cover's flat, you can see actually there are quite some wear lines around the outside of the puck lights. That's just where they, they jiggle around on the road inside the clear plastic uh, container that's stitched into the front. I'll leave these on though because the cover looks a bit odd without anything in those front pockets but I will take the batteries out so that they don't start leaking and corrode anything and just in case I need them. Weirdly the light on this side is still fine. And here's how it all looks on the table. I'm not the world's neatest sewer, so I certainly wouldn't win any prizes uh, for quality uh, seams dressing. It's quite rough and ready, but it's certainly strong. You know, all the seams are well stitched and well started and well finished. Um, and the messy bits are mainly out of sight. So really, it's only me that knows they're there. So let's get these two pieces folded up and carried outside and fingers crossed that it all works. The other problem of course doing this single-handed is that obviously you'd really rather that no part of the cover ever touch the ground but if you're doing it single-handed quite often you have to uh, because you just can't get the whole thing into the awning rail with so this is the best way to do it obviously making sure only the outside is touching the ground you don't want any part of that uh, lovely soft fleecy inner from picking up any muck from on the ground obviously this works much better if it's dry or you're on hard standing and then it doesn't pick anything up anyway Obviously, if you're pitched over mud, then I guess it's worth the effort of trying to balance everything to make sure nothing touches the ground whilst you're using two hands to thread it into the awning rail.
And there we go, that's it for today. I hope watching the, the little modifications I was able to do uh, was fun, informative, useful. Manufacturers out there are, are making a lot wider range of these things nowadays. But I thought it might be nice to look back and see something that I made a couple of years ago and that's proven really great for us. You know, it's still going strong, so every time we go out, uh, we have the towing cover on. So really pleased that I was able to do this. So I've got a great towing cover in the end um, for a very reasonable price because it was just an off the peg one, but obviously a lot of hours of work to get it to work exactly how I wanted. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed watching. Thanks so much for following along. Please do hit those uh, like and subscribe buttons if you're so inclined. That would be most appreciated. And thanks for watching. Catch you again soon. Bye for now.